and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Monday, April 18th, and the year is 2022. This is a YouTube live streaming event. Whether this is your first time visiting my channel or you are back visiting again, I am thrilled that you're here. It is a privilege to have you with me, and we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. I've got something a little bit special for you tonight because I'm going to give you the perfect gift idea. It involves handmade cards and a handmade box. And wait until you see this wow. The best part is it's super easy. Now, a couple things before we get started tonight. I wanna to let you know about the free project sheet because you're gonna want the template that I created for you that I put in that project sheet. That project sheet includes multiple pictures, cutting dimensions, supplies, and of course that template for tonight's gift card box but you're also gonna get pictures of all the cards. Now I'm gonna demonstrate one of the cards with you, but I have three other cards to share with you. Plus I'm gonna make the box with you. So we may go just a tad longer than normal, but it's gonna to be totally worth it because quite honest with you, handmade cards are fantastic gift items. Perhaps Mother's Day, graduation, retirement, or maybe just to pick me up for a friend. This is a great way to provide an affordable and useful gift. Now, the other two things I wanna to talk to you about is we would love to chat with you. If you are here in the live chat or you are commenting on the replay, you will need to log into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address in order to do so. That's a requirement of YouTube, not of me, but we would love to hear from you. I come back and I read every single comment. And then finally, I wanna take a moment and introduce you to Gina curcio Holly. You'll see Gina's name here in blue off to the live chat on the side. She is my daughter, but she's also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa's Stamp Studio and an avid stamper. She's been stamping with me the whole 23 plus years that I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And she is here to interact with you, be able to provide links and answer your questions because there's no way for me to keep up during the live stream. We are all set, let's get started. All right, like I said, we're gonna start with the card first. So for my card base, they are all four and a quarter by 11. Now the great thing about this card that I totally love is once you find a layout you like, make your life easy. If you're gonna do box cards for a gift like I'm going to do, you can make the layouts the same. You're gonna see what I mean in just a moment. So I've used my bone folder to go over that crease, which I already did beforehand, and all those cutting dimensions are gonna be in your supplies. And then here, I've got my silicone craft sheet. I cannot live without this thing because adhesive liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to it, which means it's gonna keep my work surface sticky free. I absolutely love this product. Now I'm gonna be using some designer series paper and I wanna show this to you. Now you're gonna get a little bit of a reflection here from the lights, but it's worth it. Look at that gold foil. Now Stampin' Up! designer series papers are double-sided, which I love because you can expound on your use. And of course, if you know me, we're gonna be using that fun, shiny side tonight. And we're gonna have a black layer. But I have to show you this paper because I think it's been well overlooked in the current mini catalog. It's called Abstract Beauty. And I put this one on top specifically because it's going to be used quite a bit on this card. And I wanna show you the versatility to this. So I'm just gonna page through here really quick. Look at double-sided papers, oh, foil prints on one side, and like I said, generic patterns on the other. I don't know about you, but this is something I can use for a very long time. And look how much paper you get. Absolutely love that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by adding adhesive to what's gonna be my wrong side tonight. And again, I'm using that silicone craft sheet under there in case I've had a rough Monday and I got a little bit off those edges because I sometimes do and I'm just gonna go around the border. Now I'm gonna tell you something about this adhesive. This is Stampin' Seal Plus. It's my favorite adhesive, but it is super strong, and if Lisa's had a rough day, <laughs> which I'm obviously struggling with my adhesive, it will tend to rip your paper. So the trick to this adhesive, because I love it, is to use a light hand. I tend to be heavy-handed, which is one reason why I don't like glue. So you don't wanna press down too hard. I am looking to leave that border of black cardstock all the way around. So looking here and here just to do the very best that I can. And we're going to tack that in place. Now I am going to add another layer of paper to this because can a girl ever have too much paper, right? So this is also from that same package of designer series paper, again, double-sided. But because I wanted to create, um, it's a little bit more of a contrast with what I'm going to be doing. I wanted to border this a little bit. 
The thing about this, if you're like me, how many times do we cut this little border too small, right? So we're gonna purposely leave it long and I wanna give you a really, really great tip because whenever you're bordering papers on top of each other, especially with a dark edge, if you're off by a smidgen, it's noticeable. At least it is for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my CO Plus. I'm not gonna to press too hard. There we go. If you've had a rough day, this is not your adhesive. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that right now. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we are going to border this here at the top. You know what? I think I want a little bit more tape there. So let's go ahead and add a little bit here and a little bit here. I think most of you know that I struggle with osteoarthritis in my basal joint down here. And today has been an especially kind of yucky day. I've been hurting really bad. Could have been all those dishes I did yesterday during Easter that were totally worth it. All right, so I'm pressing that on here. So I'm leaving that little bit of a border. I cut this long on purpose because I wanna be able to make sure those ends are perfectly placed. And this is where I'm gonna come in with my long tip scissors. I'm using this paper edge as a guide. And as long as it's butt up against my scissors, it's gonna be straight every single time. And I love that because I don't have to be too long or too short. And I'm going to come in there a little bit more and then just kind of trim that up. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to add some adhesive to this. And we are going to add this here to the card base. So I know I've already got some adhesive down at the bottom. Let's go ahead and let's add a little bit more here at the top, all across my top edge. This tape comes out in little tabs. And I love it because if I need to get just a tiny bit, I easily can do that. Now on this layer, what we're going to do is we're going to put this all the way near the bottom. I want you to keep in mind that projects like this are absolutely perfect with designer series papers because it creates a beautiful quick card. All right, this now is going to get adhered to our card base. So I'm going to flip this over one more time. I'm just getting that adhesive started with my fingers because my hands are really sore today. And I'm just working around the perimeter slowly and carefully because I got strong hands today apparently. I'm gonna turn this horizontally. Another great tip for you because I tend not to do things even. And I find if I do them horizontally, I have a better vantage point all the way around. And I'm looking just to try to leave that very narrow margin. That's one eighth of an inch. And we're gonna tack that in place. All right, the rest of this is very, very simple, but let me show you what I did. Now beforehand, I used one of my very favorite die sets. It's called Stitched So Sweetly. Now I will tell you that this is on the retirement list, which is called the last chance products list with Stampin' Up, which means you only have until May 2nd to scoop this up. I'm in mourning because it's one of my favorites. I love the graduated sizes of these scalps. They're beautiful and they're stitched. And these different label shapes, you're gonna see how I've used them, they're fantastic. Now, before you joined me, I took the liberty of just taking this a step further on my own because we had other things we were gonna do together. So I die cut this medium shape that was right here and I stamped a greeting on it. Now this greeting I wanna share with you because it's from one of my very favorite all occasion stamp sets called Celebrating You. And it's gonna be carried over into the brand new annual catalog on May 3rd. So you don't have to rush and get this one unless of course you love it as much as I do. So I went ahead and I chose that greeting here and I've stamped it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this a step further. I'm gonna flip this upside down and now I'm gonna add some dimensionals. I find that dimensionals are what I call like my little cheap thrill. They're very, very inexpensive and they great, create some great elevation to your card. So I'm gonna add some of those here and I'm very careful to make sure that they're balanced because oftentimes my cards will go through the mail. Now, since this is gonna go in a gift box, obviously I'm gonna hand deliver this or I may box it to mail it. But the person that's getting the card on the other end from who's gonna send it, obviously will probably mail it. Now here comes the best part. Do you remember this designer series paper we just talked about? Well, I'm gonna show you my very favorite retiring product on the last chance list. It's this. It's called Pierced Blooms. And I am really mourning this one and here is why. There is a huge array of dyes in here. Every single one comes out with a stitch border. Beautiful. But guess what? It is 50% off right now. This is on sale for $18.50 and you are going to love it. Wait until you see what it does. It even has a bow, do you see it here? And there's also a label here. So there's lots and lots of uses for this. Now I'm not gonna bore you with the die cutting. I did do that ahead of time. 
And I've got some pieces here that I want to share with you. So I've got two of the small flowers and I decided I wanted to put these together to create a larger bloom. So I've got my glue dots here and this is my take your pick tool that's rolling right into the scene. That putty tip is going to help me pick up those small pieces, not only because of my arthritic fingers, but because they often want to stick to your work surface. And that paper piercing tool attachment, this is interchangeable on here. It allows me to get right up underneath there and just pick this up, which I love. And then I can mimic this the way I want it. And I'm going to offset those petals on purpose and I'm going to attach these two together. Also, before you joined me, I die cut one of those little black centers. Now there's numerous of these on here and I'm pointing them out for a reason. You'll see when we get on further with the box and the cards. So another glue dot because that's really nice and easy. Can't live without these things. And then again, I'm just going to put this on here. I love this because the flowers are meant to be abstract. Now, before you joined me, I went ahead and I did a couple other flowers. I've got this one and I've got this one. I did an extra. I don't even know if it's going to fit, but let's go ahead and let's work on this. I want to make sure that the flowers provide some elevation on here so that they pop off the page. And this is where the dimensionals are going to work. My most important tip for you is when you're working on a collage of images and greetings, take the time and lay them out so you have an idea of where you want them to go. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I always think I know where it's going to go and then it never ends up looking right when I go to stick it down. So this is going to save you some wasting a couple dimensionals. Now this one I want to tuck behind here, but I do want it elevated. So I'm going to roll that upside down and this time I'm going to use a mini dimensional. I want to make sure that this dimensional is small enough that it's not going to impede on whatever's behind here and doesn't rest too big for this one. So I'm going to flip that one upside down as well and we'll do another mini dimensional. These backings are so easy to take off with that piercing tool. And this one is meant to be very, very whimsical. So I'm going to kind of rest this here at the bottom. And then we have one more. I have this one here and I just decided to do a different kind of flower just so you can see more of what the dies um, are capable of doing. I absolutely love this die set. I am going to miss it. So I'm butting that here in that little corner because I don't want the dimensional to rest half on and half off. Otherwise, it's going to be wobbly. So there we go. This one I'll save for another card. So there's no waste. Pretty and very simple. Now let me show you the other three cards that are going to go part of this box set and then we're going to make the bar, the box itself. Okay, so here's the one we made together. I want you to keep in mind that this exact same layout is going to encompass all the cards. Here's the next one. The only difference is different papers. You might recall that this was the backside of this. When you get a package of paper this size, you have so much opportunity to mix and match because the coordination is done for you. And oftentimes, a bright paper with a black ink is a real way to pop up your image. Again, same layout, same cutting dimensions. Do you see how I brought in some of the foil on these planar papers? That's going to bring continuity to this whole gift. And again, I use those labels again in a really creative way. Let me show you. Do you see how there's numerous shapes here? They stack inside of each other so that you can create extra layers. Really, really pretty. And then here is the fourth one. Now keep in mind, these are all going to go in the box that we're going to make next. Now these gilded gems, oh, I love them. I decided not to use black here. I decided I wanted to bring out that sparkle in this paper. And these gems are also on the Last Chance products list, but I wanted to share them with you. Um, by the way, I have numerous packages in here because they're some of my favorites. Large, medium, and small. And guess what? They're on sale for $5.60. You're not going to want to miss getting these Last Chance products. All right, so we've got our pretty cards, right? All right, let me put these off to the side and let's now work on that box. I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer. Now I've zoomed you in a little bit closer tonight because we're going to just do some scoring. Now my trimmer is one of my very favorite tools here in the studio because it includes both the scoring and the cutting blades. They navigate up and down out of the way. You can leave them on the track at the exact same time. You are going to love this trimmer. You will never want another one, I promise you. There is a ledge here at the top. There is another one here at the bottom so that your paper is always nice and straight. You're going to put it right up to there. And this arm extends just past 17 inches. I love it. Okay, so with my little ledge there within your camera view, I am going to work on the box bottom first. 
Now I'm not gonna even bother you and confuse you with all the cutting dimensions. It's all net free project sheet. This is super easy. We are gonna do one inch score lines all the way around, super simple. The other reason I love this trimmer is because you have one and one quarter inch, probably one and one half inch all the way to the right, as well as all the dimensions to the left. This coating on here is nice and smooth. It's never going to rub off. It has a protective finish on it. It's fantastic. So I like to be able to hold more paper when I score. So I'm going to line this up at the one inch mark. Again, right against that straight ledge here at the top. That's going to help keep things nice and straight. And I'm using that light blade and we are going to score. I am going to rotate. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side and we're gonna rotate. So it's one inch all the way around. I mean, this is easy. This is something even the kids can do for you. Those of you that have kids, or perhaps maybe you're a grandparent and your grandchildren have teachers, teacher appreciation days coming up, I believe it's in May. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to keep this idea in mind for a beautiful handmade gift. Now we're gonna come back to this in a few minutes, but while I've got this out, let's go ahead and let's work on the other two scoring dimensions. This is going to be the cover. And you might be looking at this thinking, that's not gonna work because I designed this to be something really, really different. So we're only gonna do two score lines. They're very simple. The one is at four and seven eighths of an inch. So four and seven eighths is right before that five. And then we are going to score and we're gonna do one more, just an inch apart. So that's five and seven eighths, and that's all the way over here. And you're gonna see again, I'm working along that ledge to keep my paper nice and straight. All right, that is this. I am gonna set this off to the side for just a minute, and let's come back to the box base. I am going to crease up on these first because I think it's gonna be easier for you to see. So I'm gonna go all the way around, and I'm using my bone folder to reinforce that cardstock. The one thing about the Stampin' Up! cardstock that I love is the quality. Not just because it's nice heavyweight cardstock, but it's colored all the way through. So if you love to rip and distress your paper, you are not gonna have to worry about seeing white. It is fantastic. All right, now I wanna teach you a little trick about boxes that has helped me immensely. Oftentimes when we go to snip this and put this together, it gets bulky here. So let me give you a tip. What you're going to do is you're gonna cut from here to here to that score line. You're just gonna snip this. This is gonna give you those tabs. So I'm going from here to here and from here to here. And while we're at it, let's just flip it around and do the other side as well, okay? Here to here and here to here. So just like a normal box, you've got those little tabs now. What happens is, is when we often try to fold this in, if we cut this just a hair too long, it doesn't fold right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna miter the corners. So take your scissors, and this is inside your project sheet template too. And you're just gonna cut from here to here. All right, don't do what Lisa does and don't try to rip this off. How many of you ever try to do that because we're like so excited, we just wanna get it done, right? And then we're gonna go here and we're gonna do the same thing. So all your essence doing is just creating a half of what's here, okay? All right, I'm, make, I'm speeding this up as you can tell. I'm gonna do the same thing here cutting this in half. Try, oh, that one came off nice and easy. And then one more here. Obviously, when I'm making this and you're not watching me, I'm a lot more taking my time. And let me just make sure that comes off. It does. So these are trash. We're not gonna need these any longer. Now I have tried all kinds of ways of putting this together and my nemesis liquid glue <laughs> is the best way. So, and like I said, the only reason I don't like liquid glue for most of my projects is simply because I'm heavy handed. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips about that. First and foremost, the liquid glue is sold in my online store. It is fantastic. It is super duper strong. You do not need to go crazy with it. I get a lot of questions about this. This is my multi-purpose liquid glue holder. It keeps the glue in here perfectly upside down so the glue is always at the tip. You're gonna be able to find this linked for you on my website under shop craft room favorites. If you go there, it's about the fifth one down. And I've got a bunch of products there that aid me with my Stampin' Up! products in my studio that are not sold in my store. So this is, and this isn't, but I linked it there because a lot of you ask about it. All right. So here's my tip for you. I want to work upside down because that's going to make it easy. I'm going to keep that silicone craft sheet underneath me to make my life easy. If you are not sure about your glue, get it started because there's absolutely nothing worse if you don't have this holder 
and it's been laying in a funky way and it comes out in a glob all over your project. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to just move this up so you can see it. I'm gonna work closely here, but I'm not gonna to work too close because you know what happens, right? It's gonna ooze. So I'm working this to the inside. I'm looking to create the crease of the box with the crease of this corner. And this is, like I said, this glue is super, super strong. So just give it a pinch for like a couple seconds and then you can move on to the other corner. Now I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I wanted to make sure it was dry so we could learn the fun parts, right? And I'm just gonna do one more so that you can see. I'm tucking this in and I'm pinching it at the corner. I find that if I do one corner at a time working from the back side, not only do I get a really pretty finished top with no uneven areas, it's gonna set up really, really well. All right, so we're just gonna pretend for the sake of the live stream that we have already put that box together, which we did, and it's here and it's nice and dry, okay? You might recall that we made the top of the box as well. Now, I decided that I wanted to corner round this. So I'm bringing in this. This is the detailed trio punch, another thing I'm mourning because it's also on the last chance products list. This is marked down as well to $12. This is three punches in one and you cannot beat this price. So we have a corner rounder, we have a nice hole punch here as well. And I love this for those little bit wider ribbons that you always can't get the ribbon through, right? And a beautiful decorative corner. So you're gonna to wanna to lay this flat on your work surface to use it well. You're going to punch in the center. Don't think you're gonna to gravitate to the image. It doesn't work that way. So I'm gonna take my corner. I'm gonna place it inside of there. Do you see here and here? There are guides on the punch for each of these positions that's going to ensure you have your cardstock in. And then you're gonna press in the center and you get that perfect rounded corner every single time. And I love this punch. In fact, I am gonna still be using it because a corner rounder is a good thing. If you happen to make a little mistake, and you know what, we all get excited and we do, stick it back in there. The one thing about this punch is you're gonna notice that it really is very detailed on the area it needs to punch. It won't over punch for you. So I love, love, love this. And again, you're gonna be able to see those braced areas all the way around for the positioning on sale for $12. All right, I've got those score lines here. Let's go and fold these up. I'm gonna crease them up with my bone folder once again. I think a bone folder is a must, especially if you do 3D projects, you want them to stand up really, really well. Now you might be looking at this thinking, this looks like a book and it does. And I did something really special with this. So hang tight with me. Before we go too far, let's decorate the front together. And I've got most all the pieces finished because nobody likes the boring parts, right? All right, so let me jump over to some designer series paper. And this again is all from that same package because continuity is key. So this is going to coordinate with my cards and it's a great way for you to use up that designer series paper. But unlike that pink border we created, this time I have a gold one. This is gold foil. Now I'm gonna tell you something about gold foil. If you happen to get glue on it, it tends to be persnickety. So you're gonna to wanna to use adhesive in my case. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add adhesive near the top here of my designer series paper, which is my back side, working all the way to the edge. And then I'm gonna take this. Do you see how I can see through my silicone craft sheet right to that grid paper? This grid paper is fantastic. It comes in a pad of 100, it's completely affordable. Inches on one side, centimeters on the other. I can't do anything straight, so this is like my saving grace, and I'm gonna work all the way across. Now this one, I obviously got brave, and I pre-cut it before you joined me, so we've got a nice even border, but I've already showed you the trick in case you don't. This we are going to flip over, and we're gonna add some adhesive. Don't think that the outside of your box has to mirror the same format or layout of your cards. The color coordination is what's key. So please keep that in mind. Oh, you know what I just realized I didn't do? I didn't corner around it. Well, that's gonna be fun, isn't it? Let's try this. I've got a little adhesive in the corner there and let's turn this and let's get that corner in there. And I'm gonna put that right down inside looking for those corners. Oh yeah, we're okay. I didn't get adhesive too close. How many times have you done that? I know I've done it numerous times. Or sometimes I'm designing and I'm like, oh, I wanna change it. <laughs> it's a hindsight thing. All right, here's the cover binding on the left. Open it to make it easy for your hand. This is going to go down here at the bottom. Look at, I corner rounded it for nothing because I was too busy talking. Oh, well, mom, you're gonna get this one. I saw her here in the live chat tonight. 
and we're gonna press, press that in place. Now, the next thing I want to share with you about, remember we talked about these Stitch So Sweetly dies that are on the Last Chance products list? I used the second to the largest one before you joined me, and that left me with this. This is a fantastic place for you to provide a sentiment or an image. So this is the only stamping that I'm gonna to do tonight because I wanted to show you the power of a great die set and designer series paper. So I've got my black memento ink here and I've pulled out this greeting. You are one of a kind and this is a fantastic title for this boxed gift. This comes from Slim Sayings and this is currently in the mini catalog and I'm loving it because the imaging in, in these fonts are big and if you've got pretty paper, call your card done. You're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up in the black memento ink. I'm tapping and traveling. I always check it because I always have a habit with these bigger ones, especially with my bad hands, of missing the bottom. All right, let's see if I cannot get this messed up. And I'm gonna turn it sideways because I don't do anything straight, remember? This helps me. Lots of firm, even pressure. Press out the words and then lift. Okay, I've got my stamp and scrub, or in your case, it might be a stamp chamois off camera. That's how I'm cleaning it. And I also cut a layer to this, because remember, we want to create some continuity from the outside to the inside. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to flip this over as well, and we're going to add some of that adhesive back here on the back side. And then this is going to get mirrored on here. Again, all your cutting dimensions are in that project sheet. This is going to make it nice and simple for you. Do you recall that we had this portion of the box? We are going to add this to the front. Again, if you had a large die with a floral shape, you could use that as well. I'm gonna add some um, dimensionals to the back of this, but I wanna teach you a really incredible closure for this box as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my dimensionals. I'm gonna add one in each of my four corners. It looks like I kind of ran over these. I kind of pushed right through the paper, didn't they? I'm gonna do one in the middle as well. I am very cognizant that I want things to lay flat. I don't want anything to be flopping off. There's nothing more embarrassing than creating a gift, especially a 3D project, where nothing lays correctly. Again, let's open that up. Let's make it nice and flat for our hands, and I'm going to split the space. So we're using some of that top space, some of that bottom space, but I'm bringing some color down. Before you join me, I already did those flowers, so you don't have to watch me again. But this time I used some additional pieces in the die that I hadn't shown you yet. Look at these, is this not gorgeous? This is actually gold foil using that exact same Pierced Blooms die set. There are incredible leaves in here. Beautiful, beautiful, we get all kinds of different flowers. Now I wanna to talk to you a little bit about this. There's a couple ways you can do this. And to be quite honest with you, the easiest way for me when I'm collaging things, as I said, is I like to make sure I get an idea of where they're gonna go first. So let's kind of just lay this out so that I create some continuity to what I'm talking to you about. And then this one probably is gonna go here. So we're gonna add a little bit of interest in the upper corner, draw your eye down. Then I can determine where my pieces are going to go. Now you may want to add these two glue dots to the back of your flowers, but I typically don't and I'm gonna tell you why. Because it never fails, I turn it and it doesn't go exactly where I intended. So let's go ahead and let's use some of these dimensionals. I'm going to work in the center because I want to make sure that I'm staying off of this layer so that it doesn't teeter. And on this one here, let's go ahead and use a mini dimensional. And then we're going to work on the closure to this. And believe it or not, it's easy. I am avoiding adhesive and dimensional here so that I can tuck this. Because if you don't, you're going to end up ripping it apart. So I'm gonna tuck this underneath and it's stopping because of the other dimensional. Isn't this pretty and so simple. All right, and then I'm gonna get another one here and this one I am going to add and I'm gonna move that leaf so it's not in the way. I'm teetering it off the corner so it lays nicely within the perimeter. You know, one thing about a 3D project that I love is you're not necessarily confined to the space, right? Because it's gonna be hand delivered. It's not gonna to have to fit in an envelope. Now this one, I'm gonna work over here and then we've got one more flower to go, and then we're gonna work on that closure. And I also have envelopes for this. I'm excited to share those with you as well. And then this is going to go here. For those of you that this is your first time watching me, I am thrilled that you are here. I hope to inspire you and give you lots of tips about paper crafting. 
over at lisastampstudio.com. I offer very generous ordering rewards and I would sure love the opportunity to earn your business. All right, here we go. Remember this? Well, we're gonna get to that in a minute. We've got one more important step. I've got two pieces of ribbon here. I sized mine up about four inches. You can make yours longer if you want to, but I kept it really, really simple. These are gonna have to go here and here. Now, I'm not concerned about some of it showing, but some of it will. So let me talk to you about this end first. If you are comfortable with liquid glue, by all means, you can use it. I'm not, as we've already discussed. So I am going to take the end of my ribbon and I've got my Stamp and Seal Plus, and this is why I love this adhesive. It is rock solid strong, okay? There is enough on here, I don't have to worry. I am looking to get the idea visually of where the center is of this, and that's right about here. And we're gonna tack that in place. We are gonna do the exact same thing now on the opposite side. So let's go ahead and let's take that and let's add some adhesive here and here. And now we're gonna slide this over inside your camera view. And I'm looking visually across. I'm not getting a ruler out, that's too much trouble, right? That looks pretty good. And then we're gonna tack that in place. This side right here, we are going to adhere. And then wait till you see what we're gonna do here. I have tried tear and tape, that works great. Or you can use liquid glue, they both work really well. I'm gonna use liquid, liquid glue tonight. Again, you are not going to want to be too heavy handed and you don't want to work too close to the edges because guess what's going to happen? It is going to ooze. So you have to apply enough glue that it's going to spread just ever so slightly without oozing out. Again, here is our crease. Do you see it? You want to make sure that this is not completely up to the edge, but close to it to make a binding. So I am looking here, and this is why I love liquid glue, because I can kind of shimmy it up and down if it's too high or too low, and then we're gonna press that in place. Now it's gonna dry very quickly. Like I said, this glue is very strong. I'm getting my fingers in there and I'm pushing. Now that that is secure, we've got this area to contend with, because to me, that looks really ugly, right? So let's grab ourselves a dimensional, and this time I made one with a gold center just to really play up all the colors in this beautiful paper. We've got another dimensional. You know what? I'm not gonna do dimensionals. I changed my mind. Let's do glue dots. I think this is gonna hold up better. So I'm placing a glue dot here and I literally went around all the petals. Now you might think that's a little excessive, but I wanted to make sure, I wanted to be assured that this was not going to lift and my ribbon didn't show. I wanted to make sure I'm not embarrassed to the person who gets it. All right, let's go ahead and take this now and slide that back in your camera view. And then this is going to hide the raw end. So I'm gonna place that right here and press those glue dots down. That's not going anywhere. All right, let's go get the contents for this beautiful box. So I have four envelopes here. I am gonna tell you that I used a floral set that is no longer available. I know it's okay, but we all got flowers, right? So that's gonna go inside of there. I've got my four envelopes to coordinate with my four cards. Those are gonna go inside. Depending on how much you add to the layers of these cards, I think you can get six in here. You can get even more if you flip-flop their directions. So these on the bottom obviously would go the opposite way than this. Another important tip, if you are giving cards as a gift, vary your greetings like I have here. That allows the receiver to use these in a really special way. If you know they do a ton of birthdays, then make them all birthday. But I did birthday, thank you, just for you, and then something that you're on my mind. This is all gonna go inside. This is gonna get closed. I'm just gonna make a very simple slip knot or a really, really tiny, tiny single bow. I get lots of people asking me about this. Take the other tail, pull it all the way through. You know how you would normally stop? It just gives you a single bow, you obviously can trim that up and make it a little bit smaller, but look at, isn't this beautiful? Oh my gosh, it's really, really fantastic. And again, everything is anchored down. This has been glued to the inside. It's not going anywhere. Do me a favor, leave me a comment right now, and I wanna give you an important date for you to put on your calendar. Before I do that, do me a favor, head over to lisasstampstudio.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, because if you love free PDF tutorials, 
I send a free one not shared on any of my other platforms every Thursday, and I would love to have you join us. It's no frills. While you're over there on my website, you can request a catalog and you can check out my very extensive PDF tutorial library. Would love to be able to inspire you with lots more ideas. There are over hundreds of tutorials there for the taking for you. I only charge $1 per page. Now do me a favor, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, click that subscribe button and the bell and the word all because you're going to want to get those notifications from YouTube. I am going to be back live with you on Monday of next week. And guess what? Gina is going to be here with me. It's the last Monday of the month and she is always here. Looking at the date to make sure I've got it right. It is April 25th already at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And guess what? Brand new products that we have for you. An amazing, simple, fun fold card. We look forward to being here with you next Monday. Gina, thanks for all your hard work moderating tonight. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.